welcome to C Rock Online. We are super, super excited to have you all join us for service today. It's another bright Sunday in the month of April. We have lots of fun lined up for you. We're going to praise, we're going to worship, we're going to learn at the feet of Jesus. But before we get into all of that, let us pray. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to see another bright Sunday in the month of April. Lord, even as we're about to praise and worship you, we ask in the name of Jesus that you help us to praise and worship as we ought to. For in Jesus' amazing name we have prayed. Amen. Today is the day 
was amazing. Please clap for yourself. Awesome. Awesome. It's time for us to worship. Are you ready? But I need you all to take away every form of distraction. I need your attention and your focus to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Are you ready? I am. Let's go. with calm. 
Father, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for enabling us to worship and praise you as we ought to. Lord Jesus, even as we are about to get into your word, we ask that you teach us. We ask that you help us to do all that we will learn from your word. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Good morning, children. Good morning and happy Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to you. Wow, you look amazing. Is that your Easter dress? It is. It's gorgeous. You look good too. You're a very handsome young man, you know. Okay, good. So now let's do our greetings. Okay, turn to your neighbor and say good morning. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, good morning. And then you wave your hands and say, good morning and a happy Easter. Good morning and happy Easter to you too. Great. So we're here. It's a beautiful, bright Sunday. And I'm excited to be here because today is Easter Sunday. And it means so much much to us in God's kingdom. It means so, so much to us. Why? Hmm. Why? I'll tell you. Let's first check your five items. So bring out your files, all neatly packed up, and let's begin to check your notebook, your pen or your pencil, your fresh fire, your Bible, and your offering. Great, great, great. You have them all. You have them. Do you have yours? Okay, you have them. Good, you have yours. You don't have something. You have four. What don't you have? Ooh, your fresh fire. Hmm. He doesn't have his fresh fire. Is that a problem? It's not a problem. We have you covered. Just ask mommy or daddy to come over to the church office or to the resource stand and they'll get you a copy of your very own fresh fire where you write your name and you know that that's yours. It'll be so dear to you and be like, this is my own fresh fire. Great, 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 great. Now today is Easter Sunday, like I said. And Easter is very important to us. It's even more important than Christmas. You don't know that. It's more important than Christmas. That's where the why comes in. Because Easter signifies when our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, resurrected from the dead. Our King is alive. Yes, our King resurrected on the third day. And that day signifies Easter Sunday, which signifies today. Hmm, very, very important. So when you walk around today, hold your head up straight and know and feel cool that your king is alive. What do I have on my head? Hmm, but you see what I have on my head. What do I have? I have a crown. Yes. And who are those that wear crowns? Kings and queens. And that brings us to today's topic. Today's topic on page 42 and 43 is Living King, Resurrected King. So just like my King Jesus, I have my crown because our King is alive and our King has a crown of victory. He overcame death, he overcame the grave and he has the victory and he is the King of Kings. And just like my father, I too have a crown. And you know you can make a crown for yourself. Yes, you get a paper, that's even an assignment. Get a paper, get an adult to cut for you. Remember you're not supposed to play with scissors. And you make your very own crown. So you need paper, you need scissors, an adult supervised scissors. You need the glue and voila. You can make your very own crown. And just like me, you wear your crown on your head. And when someone says, what's on your head? You say, oh, I'm just like my King Jesus. Our King is alive. Great, 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 great. Now, what does it mean to have a resurrected King? Now, resurrection is what makes Jesus our living King. You know, we said living King, resurrected King. Now, resurrection is Jesus rising up from the dead 
after he had been dead and buried. Now Jesus is the resurrected king. And because of a resurrection, Jesus is the living king. He lives forever. He's alive. He's risen. He's no longer dead. Now it is resurrection that separates Christianity from every other religion. Yes, every other religion has what they feel their king is all about. Do they even have a king? I don't know, but I know that we have a king, and he is the king of kings, and he is the king of glory, and he is the living king, and he is the resurrected king. Now, because of resurrection, we are set apart as Christians. There is a certain way we ought to behave. There is a certain way we ought to have as our character. We've talked about character. So those are the things that make us God's children, makes us Christians. And that's because we have a resurrected king. Yeah, our king isn't dead. A lot of other main religions, their own symbol of a king is dead. But our own king, the living king, is alive. And Easter is very special. You know, we said when Jesus was born, everyone worshipped him because he knew he was special. Easter is very special to us because Jesus is alive. And Jesus is reason, like the song that says, Reason, he is reason, forever glorified. Jesus is alive. Now let's go to Acts chapter 1 verse 3. It says, After his death, he showed himself to them and proved in many ways that he was alive. The apostles saw Jesus during the 40 days after he was raised from death. He spoke to them about the kingdom of of God. Hmm. The resurrection is a reminder to us that Christianity is about a very special person and his name is Jesus. So that's the resurrection story. It's all centered around our King of Kings, the Son of God, and that's Jesus. And he showed himself to people. He showed himself to his disciples. So everyone already had records that our king is alive. It's not just a story that someone just comes and says, okay, something happened. No, Jesus had evidence and he showed his disciples that he was alive. Even there was someone called Dalton Thomas. He was doubting that. Are you sure this is Jesus? And Jesus told him to put his finger in his hands where he was killed at the cross of Calvary, where the nail was stuck into his hand. And he did that and definitely the hole was there. 
our king is alive. After Jesus died, a few of his friends, including a woman named Mary, took his body, wrapped it in linen clothes, and placed it in a tomb near the city. It was a very sad and confusing time for Jesus' friends, especially Mary. She was heartbroken. This was the man that she had followed and dedicated her life to. He had taught her everything she knew about God. She remembered the first time she met Jesus. Some angry men wanted to kill her for something she had done wrong. They brought her to Jesus, and instead of being angry with her, he loved and forgave her. She believed with all of her heart that Jesus was God's son, and he was going to save the world. But now he was dead, and like the rest of Jesus' friends, she didn't know what to believe anymore. How could this happen, they questioned. What are we supposed to do now? This isn't how it was supposed to end, they thought to themselves. The religious leaders, on the other hand, were thrilled. We have finally gotten rid of Jesus, they said. And just to make sure that none of his followers would try to come and take his body, they sent soldiers to guard his tomb. And they rolled a huge stone in front of the door of the tomb so that no one could get in or out. Early on Sunday morning, just before sunrise, Mary and some of the other women who knew Jesus went to visit his tomb one last time. Even though it was a beautiful morning, it didn't feel that way to Mary. She walked along the road to the tomb in sad silence as she remembered her best friend and how much she missed him. As Mary and her friends approached the tomb, they noticed something was different. The giant stone that had sealed the tomb was no longer in front of the door. It had been rolled to the side and the door was open. The soldiers who were supposed to be guarding the tomb were nowhere to be found. The women were perplexed and they cautiously took a peek inside, not knowing what they would see. As she looked inside, Mary noticed there was something missing. Jesus' body was not where they had laid it three days earlier. In fact, his body wasn't there at all. It was gone. Mary was about to shout for help, but before she had time to say anything, someone in bright, shining clothes appeared before her. It was an angel, and he asked the women, Why are you here? Tombs are for the dead, but Jesus is alive. Mary and her friends couldn't believe what they were hearing. They thought, Could this really be true? Is Jesus really alive? They wanted to believe what the angel said, but they still had so many questions like, If he is alive, then where is he? Why haven't we seen him yet? The women turned and started to run back home to tell everybody the amazing things they had heard. But Mary stopped. She saw someone off in the distance. That must be the gardener, she thought. I'll go find out if he's seen Jesus. As she got closer, Mary called out to him, Sir, I'm looking for someone who was buried in this tomb, but I can't find him. Have you seen him? she asked. Mary, he said. That's strange, thought Mary. I know that voice. I've heard it many times before. It's, it's Jesus. She screamed excitedly. Her heart felt like it was going to jump out of her chest. But, but how is this possible, she thought. She was there when he was crucified. She saw him take his last breath on the cross just three days earlier. She even helped wrap his body and watched as they placed it in the tomb. But it was Jesus. He was standing there right in front of her. She fell to the ground and began crying tears of joy at the sight of seeing her best friend alive again. She wanted to jump up and give Jesus a big hug. You can hug me later, Mary, Jesus said, but now you need to go tell everyone else that I'm alive. Mary took off running as fast as she could down the same path, over the same hills and by the same trees that she had passed that morning. But now she didn't feel sad. In fact, everything looked different. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, the flowers were blooming, and Jesus was alive again. She couldn't wait to tell her friends that everything he said was true. He really is the Son of God. They're not going to believe it, she said to herself. This changes everything. And she was right. Everything had changed. Jesus and his father had done it. Their plan worked. They beat sin, they beat death, and they had made a way for all of God's children to be with him again forever. 
Jesus is the resurrection and he is the life. So he's the living king, resurrected king. He is the resurrection and the life. Good, good, good. Now, <laughs> we have certain questions that we need to ask. And that's why do we believe that Jesus is alive? Why do we as Christians believe that Jesus is resurrected? Why? Why do you think that we believe? Why do you believe that your king is alive? Why do you think that your king is alive? Get your book and your pen and begin to write the answers. Number one, Jesus is alive in us. We can speak to him and he speaks back. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You know how you pray. You say, Father, please help me do this, 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 this. For example, please help me pass all my exams. And he hears you. And he speaks to you. He tells you, you're going to pass. But you have to study. And you tell him, thank you, Father. That's Jesus speaking. If he wasn't alive, he wouldn't be talking to you. If he wasn't alive, you wouldn't hear him. We've told you several times how you can hear the voice of God. That's Jesus speaking to you. So our king is alive because we talk to him, he talks back. We speak to him, he speaks to us. We pray to him, he gives us the answers. He's alive. You only have to be alive to do those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So number two, we see countless miracles every day that prove that Jesus is alive. Like we can't even begin to mention all the miracles. Can you think of one miracle today? There's a miracle that happened around you today. You woke up from your sleep and you are alive. That's a miracle. Not everyone gets that privilege, but we have the privilege because of Christ Jesus. So there are many more miracles. We have the blind seeing, the lame walking, the dumb talking, the deaf hearing. There's so much sicknesses are healed. We didn't get coronavirus. The virus is far from us. We are alive. We are healthy. We can eat. We can sleep. We can sing. We can praise the Lord. So many miracles. God provides food on our table when we ask him to. Yes. You have that your PlayStation game. That's a miracle. So we see miracles every day in our lives that Jesus does through us, around us. And all these miracles prove that our king is alive. Now write down number three. Every single prophecy about the Messiah was fulfilled in Jesus. And we've told you about that, how there were so many prophecies from the prophets of God right before Jesus was born, and all the prophecies came to pass about the king of kings. Yes, yes, those prophecies. That shows you that our Messiah is king and our king is alive. Because if he wasn't the king, those prophecies won't come to pass. The people who had those prophecies, the prophets, thank you very much, thank you, the prophets who had those prophecies, were not there when Jesus was born. They didn't even know him physically, but God spoke through them and they prophesied about him. And those prophecies came to pass. That's the kind of king that we have. The king that has always been king from the creation of time. Isn't that amazing? The king that has always been king from the creation of time. Hmm, that's our king. Now let's write again. Number four. No one else ever claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life. No one. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Boldly. Like he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. There is no contending. He didn't say, I may be the way, the truth, or I could be, or maybe I am. Mm -mm. He was very bold. And he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And you have to be the king of glory to be bold enough to say that to the face of your enemy. He said it, and everyone heard it, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And really, he is the way the truth, and he is the life. It is through him that we go to heaven. He is the way to heaven. He is the truth. 
because he is the king of kings and he is life. Because through him, we have life in abundance. So we have a living king. Yes. And then number five, which is the last one. There were living eyewitnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. Just like we said, he appeared to the disciples. They saw him, not just the disciples. He appeared and people saw him. He had, when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb to embalm him and he wasn't there and the angels were like, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Mary came out. And they saw Jesus. So Jesus showed himself to people that were living, breathing witnesses who knew that Jesus is alive. Our king is alive. Our king lives forever and ever and ever. And he will always live because he will preserve us. He will protect us. And he's going to make us. Oh, yes, he has already made us. Limitless all the way. That's the God that we serve. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. So you see why Easter is very special. So go out there. Go and have fun. Enjoy your day. It's a very special day. Oh, the most special day ever. Easter. Our king is alive. Go out there and tell the world that our king of glory is is alive and who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle he is the king of glory today. We learned that Jesus, the living King, is the resurrected King. And we learned that He is alive forever and ever. He is alive. And He is the way, the truth, and the life. And never forget that the resurrection is all about Jesus. Yes, yes. So now let's go to page 43. And we see the picture that says Jesus visited his disciples after he rose from the dead. He blessed them and went up into heaven. Yes, he did. He blessed them just like he blesses us all the time. So we're going to color the picture, color the picture, because hallelujah, Jesus is alive. All things bright and all things Beautiful. It's time for us to take our life applications. Let's all stand up. Put your right hand where? On your chest and repeat after me. 
Easter is very special. Jesus is the risen King. Jesus is the living King. Now let's take this again. Easter is very special. Jesus is the risen King. Jesus is the living King. Very special day. And once again to you, happy Easter. Let's all sit down quietly, eliminate all forms of distraction, okay? Let's take our memory verse together. Our memory verse is taken from Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, Jesus is the only one who can save people. No one else in the world is able to save us. Now let's take this again. A memory verse is taken from Acts chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, Jesus is the only one who can save people. No one else in the world is able to save us. Absolutely no one. Absolutely no one. No one can save us. Just Jesus. So it's time for us to pray. And we're going to take our song again as the prayer. The song we sang previously which says, Reason, his reason, forever glorified. Reason, he's risen, King Jesus, King Jesus is to go but before we go we need to keep checking our hygiene because I know we're on holiday yes and we must make sure that we keep ourselves all neat and secure hmm. so no harm will come to us okay great so let's sing the song together one two three go wash your hands wash your hands clean 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 wash your hands wash your hands clean 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 wash your hands for how long 20 seconds use your sanitizers your face masks and your face shields hmm social distancing is very very important and when we want to cough we don't cough <coughs> how do we cough we cough <coughs> and remember don't touch dirty surfaces so from me to you till next time it's bye bye